Hello, I am Marcella Nordbeck, artist, author, and lady trucker, coming to you from the cab of my tractor. Uh, I'm so excited because today I can honestly say that I have completed the artist way. So for the past almost eight or nine months, I've been doing the artist way by Julia Cameron. It's designed to be a 12 week program but I think it's important to note that it took me a lot longer than 12 weeks. Um, when I started this last fall, I thought that I could knock it out in 12 weeks and I'd be done before the end of the year. But as the holidays approached, I realized that I, I wanted to be present during the holidays with family and friends and that perhaps I should put it on the shelf. And then I had the intention that I, as soon as you know we got into the new year, I'd pick it right back up. But life got busy um, I got sick and then just a whole bunch of other drama unfolded and um, I had to take care of some things in my personal life but I think it's important to note that because the most important thing is I didn't completely abandon it I circled back around I picked it back up um, and I got back to it I got back to the pages writing three pages a day or most days got back to taking myself on a weekly solo artist date um, you know, got back to reading a chapter a week even if life got busy and I couldn't record these videos for you I was still staying with the program once I recommitted myself to it um, so I share that because I think one of the lessons that I've learned from from that experience just from the the timeline perspective of I set the intention I'm gonna do it in 12 weeks it took mm, almost closer to 12 months um, is that things don't always unfold on our time frame so whether we're planning our life or we're planning our next creative project I think uh, we need to be gentle with ourselves and um, I've said this time and time again because Julia keeps talking about it in the book that it's about the journey not the destination and so this journey took me much longer than I thought it would um, but I've made it to uh, the conclusion of, of this of this book of chapter 12 and chapter 12 is recovering a sense of faith and Julia begins by saying Creativity requires faith. Faith requires that we relinquish control. This is frightening and we resist it. She goes on to say, each of us has an inner dream that we can unfold if we will just have the courage to admit what it is. And on the next page she says, the truth is that we are meant to be bountiful and live. The universe will always support affirmative action. Our truest dream for ourselves is always God's will for us. And then I love that she quotes uh, the great mythologist Joseph Campbell who wrote, follow your bliss and doors were, will open where there were no doors before. So that's how she starts chapter 12. And I love when she talks about um, the truth is that we are meant to be bountiful and live and so when I, I share that this this journey this adventure with the artist way this go around which is my third by the way um, life still kept happening <laughs> um, and so sometimes I had to put the book aside um, just temporarily and and deal with life um, and so it's a wake up call for me that as I move forward in my life and I've got a lot of creative aspirations that um, I need to be gentle with myself when it takes longer or um, things just don't unfold the way that I want them to or as fast as I think they should. Um, that ultimately I think, you know, when she talks about that we need to have trust and faith that we still have to know that we are moving in the direction of our dreams. If we are taking one small action every day, no matter how small, we are still moving in the direction of our dreams. Um, and speaking of that, she then goes on to talk about mystery. And I love it when she says, we must learn to wait for an idea to, to hatch or to use a gardening image. We must learn to not pull our, we must, 
<laughs> let me start over. We must learn to wait for an idea to hatch or to use a gardening image. We must learn to not pull our ideas up by the roots to see if they're growing. Um, so she's talking about you know, needing to be patient with the creative process, which, um, which I'm learning is it's not just in the art making process. It's, it's regarding our whole life, which really, I believe firmly that we're all artists. We're the artists of our lives and um, that we are here to live and to live creatively, but we need to be patient with that process um, and we need to enjoy that process. Um, so she goes on to say, um, this is sort of repeating what I almost said, just a little more eloquently. She says, mystery is, mystery is at the heart of creativity. That and surprise. All too often when we say we want to be creative, we mean that we want to be able to be productive. Now to be creative is to be productive, but by cooperating with the creative process, not forcing it. I think that's the biggest takeaway that I've gotten, not only from this chapter, but from this whole program, is to not force anything. Um, to not force myself through this program, this 12-week program, which took me almost 12 months, to not force solutions to the challenges that were coming up in my personal life. Um, yeah, it's just amazing, actually, how life imitates art and art imitates life and um, everything that I've been learning as I've been on this journey has been things that I can apply to my life, both in front of and not in front of the canvas, both at the page and not at the page while I'm writing. Um, that, that for me just reaffirms that um, we are all artists, the artists of our lives. It's not just about making art, it's, 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 all, it's all connected. <laughs> um, and the next page, Julia goes on to say, we are an ambitious society and it's often difficult for us to cultivate forms of creativity that do not directly serve us and our career goals. Recovery urges our re-examining definitions of creativity and expanding them to include what in the past we called hobbies. The experience of creative living argues that hobbies are in fact essential to the joyful life. Um, I take that to mean that, you know, it's so important that we don't, how do I say this, that as we're creating art, that we're, you know, let go of the, of the notion of trying to figure out um, how is it going to be received? Is it going to be marketable? Is, am I going to be able to monetize it? Um, is this going to be the work that's, that's going to solve all of my financial um, challenges or, you know, give me the the notoriety that I my ego is desiring um, that it's important to um, give us an opportunity this is where the solo artist dates are important to, for me of to just play to explore as Elizabeth Gilbert talks about to follow our curiosities and somewhere along the process we'll actually take something that we're just dabbling in um, playing with in it may or may not turn into the next symphony, the next um, series of paintings, but it's so important to just to play, to allow us to explore hobbies um, so that we can continue to just practice our craft of making things, um, to practice the spiritual practice of being creative without having an intention of what that end um, product is going to look like. Um, or that you even need to have a product per se. Um, and then in chapter 12, Julia wraps up by talking about what she calls escape velocity. And she basically is talking about, um, you know, we're in the flow, it's happening, we're making something magical and magnificent, and we are just about to like launch like a NASA rocket. And then something happens. Um, basically, we get sabotage, and it might be us allowing an outside force to suck us into their chaos and drama. Um, she says, uh, the whole trick is to evade the test. 
we all draw to us the one test that's our total nemesis. And then she goes on to say, always remember the first rule of magic is self-containment. You must hold your intention within yourself, stoking it with power. Only then will you be able to manifest what you desire. In order to achieve escape velocity, we must learn to keep our own counsel, to move silently among doubters, to voice our plans only among our allies, and to name our allies accurately. Um, sort of an example is, say we decide that we want to go on a diet, we want to lose weight, we're going to start exercising more, we want to change our physical um, appearance, we want to be healthier, and we need to be careful who we share that with because people that we might have gone um, gone out with and celebrated life's experiences with, with you know, overindulging in, in food or alcohol, for example, um, if we share our, our, our intentions to improve our health through eating a little bit better and moving your body a little bit more, we have to be selective about who we share that with because the person that we used to maybe go out and party with um, might not support us in this new intention that we have. That's just sort of an extreme example that I think is really common for us um, here in the States. Um, it's the same with our creativity. Um, if we are surrounded by people who they aren't honoring their creative and or spiritual path and they're not honoring it for themselves and they're not able to support us on our journey. We need to be selective in sharing our creative and spiritual intentions with them because it's possible that they might sabotage us. And so that's what she's talking about. Um, it's really choose who you're really vulnerable with and share your truest creative intentions with so that you surround yourself with people who are going to support you on that path whether, rather than self-sabotage you. Um, I want to finish with her um, last paragraph where she says, do not indulge or tolerate anyone who throws cold water in your direction. Forget good intentions, forget they didn't mean it. Remember to count your blessings and your toes. Escape velocity requires the sword of steely intention and the shield of self-determination. Set your goals and set your boundaries. Um, boundaries, that is another uh, important aspect that I am working on in my life and uh, during this 12 week turning into almost 12 month journey um, it's been something that I've had an opportunity to uh, to practice setting boundaries and um, and having to ask people to respect those boundaries and it's not been easy but I'm getting better at it so that is the conclusion of the Artist Way adventure for this round. Um, so what's next? I've been thinking a lot about it. Um, the truth is, is I love to read and reading on the truck, especially when I was over the road for a year, I read a lot. Um, so it has evolved into a new project that I'm going to be starting called the Lady Trucker Book Club and the first book that I'm going to be talking to you about is called Left to Tell Discovering God Amidst the Rwandan Holocaust. It is written by Immaculate Ilibagaz. Hold on, let me practice her last name again. Ilibagiza. Immaculate Ilibagiza a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, she wrote this with Steve Irwin. Uh, English is her third language, so she got some assistance with telling her story. But this is a fantastic memoir. Um, I am a memoir junkie. I love reading stories written by real people who've had real experiences that they have learned and grown through and that is this book so in the next month or so i will be coming to you with a new video um kicking off the lady trucker book club so more information about that to come in the meantime thank you thank you thank you so much for following this journey um wherever you are with doing the artist way i hope that you stick with it that you stick with writing your three uh morning pages and sticking to your weekly solo artist dates. I'm going to do my best to stick with it. 
Um, so that's it for now. Signing off, and I'll see you in about a month or so with the first installment of the Lady Trucker Book Club. Thanks, guys.